it was a different, it was more, sh but the sound was more high pitched than normal rock concert, you know? It seemed like almost like all girls were screaming or something, but anyways, yeah, like the Lord uh, didn't show me the full, full uh, thing because I wasn't ready, I, I wasn't seriously ready to see that, and he just kind of like showed like a, almost like a sketch or outline of the hell, how, how it's kind of like, so I didn't see the full version, but I didn't want to see it at the moment. I was too afraid. I was looking and I was like, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta stop looking at this. I, I can't see this right now, Lord. I'm not ready. I'm sinful myself. I don't want to be there. And, well, this is, this was just mind breaking. One, one thing, another thing that I, I realized, well, like, eh, as, as you come in with the Holy Spirit, I mean, when you ask for things, He really does answer for you. I mean, I was praying the day, day before, and he showed me them right away, you know, so, you know, uh, I'm not saying, I, 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 I'm really nobody, you know, I'm, I'm really, I don't, I don't, what, what am I, I'm really worth nothing, but when you're with the Holy Spirit, and you know the price of the Holy Spirit, well, you just go after him, you know, you just, you just want more of God in your life, because he's so precious, and he's so priceless that, I mean, he's so valuable that there's no question that why you shouldn't talk to the Holy Spirit, why you shouldn't want the gift of speaking in tongues so you can come in closer to the Holy Spirit, or why, why you shouldn't be praying or reading the Bible. Because that's the most valuable things, you know. All the things, I mean, getting a job and, you know, making money is very important too in your life, but that can't be your final goal. Your your final goal, your, your, your main goal has to be your close relationship with the Lord because that's, that's a price that's, nothing can pay nothing even if you gain the whole world you know when you die you, you gotta let it all go you know you, you're gonna take it take it with you but what you what you can take it with you is your faith and your accomplishments with the lord because the lord will like grant you a whole bunch of stuff and reward you because you've been following the lord closely and i, I encourage you to keep on following the lord and don't give up to share a vision that I received from Jesus. This was some time back, and the vision I received was a vision of hell. During this time in my life, I had been listening to rock and roll music, and there was a band that I loved to listen to, and I would play their music in my car, and it was the only music I listened to. I really, really had an admiration for the lead singer to the band, and I collected photos of him, memorabilia, and everything you could think of, books about his life. But this rock star had committed suicide in the year of 1994. And so after I came to know Jesus on a personal level, I began to notice that the lyrics to this music was somewhat dark. And so I prayed to Jesus, wanting to follow Jesus the best that I could, and I asked Jesus, is it wrong to listen to this music? As soon as I had asked the question, I saw a vision of this rock star's face on fire. Flames were shooting out from the inside, through his cheeks and eyes and everywhere. He had long, pointed, sharp teeth that made him look demonic. I had always thought that he had the most beautiful face that I had ever seen, and now I saw his face looking demonic and burning. His face would burn and melt, but it would not burn up. It would repair itself and keep burning. It was a vision of hell, and he was burning there. I saw this vision clearly. I was awake and not dreaming. Hell is a real place, and those who mock God and teach others to do so are going to go there. This rock star had preached a very negative message through his music and through his interviews, and he had told people that they should give up on life. He ended his own life by committing suicide. He may have received promises for fame and fortune from those in the demonic realm, but in the end, they only tormented him until he ended up killing himself. I want to introduce you to my guest, Mary Catherine Baxter. 
because in April of 1976, at 2 a.m. in the morning, you had a surprise guest. Tell me what happened. Well, I was in prayer, and uh, Jesus Christ appeared to me in a human form. There was a brilliant light came into my bedroom, and when the light cleared up, there stood Jesus. And he said, I've appeared to you for a reason and a purpose, that I may take you on a journey and show you the depths, the degrees, the levels and torments of hell. He said, it's for the whole world, it's not for a handful of people. And he explained to me how ahead of me would be horrors and sorrows and grief, because he would actually talk to some of the dead in hell, and I would have to record it. Now, when you visited hell, was there a point where you experienced what people there are experiencing to a degree? Yes, I did. Tell me about that. See, I did that twice. It was like the 20th night into hell. I went to hell every night, three hours a night, for 30 nights. And 30 nights? You must have <laughs> been wishing this thing was over. Oh, yes, yes. And now, oh, now, we can treat it lightly right now because it's okay. back in 1976. Yeah. However, you do, I've noticed that you really don't even like talking about it that much, do you? No. Uh -uh. Why? Because I rem it bothers me uh, because of people that go to hell. They're lost and there's no more hope for them. Okay. First of all, where is hell located? In the middle of the earth. And it's in the pl shape of a human body and it's on its back. And there's different levels, different degrees, different fires of torment. Uh, how does someone enter hell? Through a gateway. Then There's gateways called tunnels. Like. They're kind of like tunnels or tornadoes, and they spin around and back again in the atmosphere. And they're hooked to the earth. And they call them tunnels, but Jesus calls them gateways to hell. And that's when they die and they've rejected God. They actually descend down this gateway into hell. Okay. Now back to that original question I okay. asked you about what it feels like to be okay. in hell as a person that uh, is separated from God. Well, it was on the twin, about the 20th night, and the Lord told me, he said, uh, you, um, you may not see me, but I'm here. He said, there's something you have to go through for this revelation, because you've got to know that you know that you know that this is real, like John the Revelator, he said. And when, when he said that, he was gone. I couldn't see him. And an evil presence, an evil demon, they came over and they touched me. And they said, your Jesus has left you. And uh, when they did, it was like a million razor blades went through my body. And I was in the spirit form. But I had all my senses, you know, and my body was at home on the bed. And I understood everything. I, I understood uh, why people were in hell, the moans and the screams of the dead. And then another demon came up and they said, we're going to put you in this compartment. And Jesus has left you. And they were laughing and mocking. And I was put in an area where the fire was racing towards my feet in a jail cell, and Sid, it burned. I could actually feel it burning me, and I was in the spirit. And it was burning my legs, and it was burning up my legs. I was screaming and screaming. And I said, Jesus, where are you? And I began to quote the word of the Lord. And as I did that, the demons would scream, and they would back up. And I'd say, the blood of Jesus, I'm redeemed, I'm saved. What am I doing here? Because it was like I was a lost sinner. It really was. And, and then, Now, from what you've told me, uh, yeah. you were able to feel Oh, Pain. yeah. Oh, my goodness, what, yes. What were you able to smell? The smell of stench, of sewers, smell of burning, rotten flesh. The air was so thin you could hardly breathe. Uh, and the, the awful part is the cries of the dead, uh, the moans and the groans of the regret because they missed Jesus. And demons remind them that they could have had Jesus. They could have been born again and been saved from eternity, damnation. Uh, could you tell me one person you spoke with there and what they said, or that Jesus spoke with and what they said? Jesus spoke to many, but the main one that really was coming to mind was a woman. Okay.